Torture of detainees The issue of detainee torture has received substantial international media coverage in recent years, primarily as a result of reports of torture at high-profile institutions in Iraq, Abu Ghraib, Afghanistan, Cuba, Guantanamo Bay, and facilities in various countries under rendition arrangements. The use of torture as a means to extract information, enforce compliance or generally break the will of detainees is nothing new. Humankind's creativity in inventing new forms of torture throughout the ages shows a serious commitment to this form of cruelty. Since the inception of the UN and the various charters, declarations and covenants, particularly the UN Convention Against Torture, UN 1975, 6 however, torture is no longer popularly acceptable. A joint investigation of torture of Palestinian detainees was conducted in May 2007 by Hamokt, Center for the Defense of the Individual and Salem, Line 2007. 7. A report revealed the nature and scope of torture that Palestinian men, women and children experienced at the hands of IDF captors over a six-month period in 2005-06. The report detailed a policy of torture in the form of beating, painful binding, swearing and humiliation and denial of basic needs which began at the moment of arrest by security forces. This treatment's practical outcome was the softening up of detainees prior to being handed over to the big guns of interrogation, the Israel Security Agency, ISA. The report identified several key elements of the treatment of detainees during interrogation periods which, in the sample, lasted an average of 35 days. Detainees were subjected to isolation, from other prisoners, their families, lawyers and international Red Cross workers, and solitary confinement in poor conditions, they were deprived of sleep, exercise and food. They were cuffed in the Shaba position, painfully bound by hands and feet to a chair. Detainees were abused and humiliated, including verbal abuse, swearing, spitting and unnecessary strip searches. Intimidation and threats of torture against the detainees and their family members were common, both to elicit information and to recruit the detainees as informants. These routine devices are intended to break the spirit or will of detainees and are prohibited under international law. It is the non-routine or special methods involving direct physical violence, however, which are most disturbing. These methods include, sleep deprivation for more than 24 hours dry beatings, extreme tightening of handcuffs, abrupt forced movements of parts of the body, frog crouching, which involves tiptoeing in a crouched position and extreme arching of detainees' backs while seated, known as the banana position. The use of these non-routine methods are not out of the ordinary, spontaneous responses to exceptional circumstances. The report indicated that the methods were pre-authorized and used according to fixed instructions. Human Rights Watch In a memorandum to the UN Committee Against Torture in May 1998, Human Rights Watch 1998 noted that Israel had failed to comply with Article 16 of the Convention Against Torture. A number of recommendations were made by the UN body and others regarding concrete steps which Israel must take to bring its law and practice into compliance. The Human Rights Watch memo stated, Israel has consistently disregarded these recommendations and continues to use torture and cruel, inhuman or degrading treatment during interrogations of Palestinian detainees. Torture as a tactic is clearly designed to instill fear, break the will, humiliate and intimidate its victims and the wider population. It is a disproportionate action because the Methods employed are clearly not immediately necessary, reasonable and without an alternative. Detainees may be suspected of some kind of involvement in a crime or potential crime. They might be relatives, friends of a suspect or they might be quite randomly chosen. Given the various reports and entreaties of the many human rights organizations in Israel's inadequate responses, it surely can be deduced that Israel intends to continue the practice.